this is a <coughs> story that has been uh, read many times, I'm sure, past Christmases. But it is a story that really forms the center of our faith, the beginning of our faith. Uh, a number of years ago, Larry King was asked by a questioner, if you could interview one person in all of history, who would that interview be with? And without batting an eye, without thinking about it at all, he immediately said, I would interview Jesus Christ. Well, the interviewer of, of Larry King asked him a follow-up question. Well, if, if you were going to interview Jesus Christ, what would be the one question that you would want to ask him more than anything else? And again, Larry King didn't hesitate uh, he said, I'd want to know, was he really virgin born? Because if he was virgin born, that would change everything. Now, as far as I know, Larry King isn't a uh, Christ follower, but um, he's absolutely right. That that changes everything. That that is uh, really at the center and the beginning of our faith. That's why Matthew begins his story in chapter 1 with the incredible assertion that Mary had never been with a man and yet was with child and that child was Jesus Christ. Um, in verse uh, 18, the last part of the verse, we read that when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph. Now, we all don't necessarily understand this whole concept of betrothal 2,000 years ago because this was actually oftentimes an agreement that would have been made by the parents of Mary and Joseph. We don't know that for sure, but that was the custom of the time. There would be contracts that would be put together, agreements that would be made, uh, and when that contract was signed, when that agreement was made, officially, Mary and Joseph were married. They were betrothed, but they did not come together to consummate their, their marriage for approximately a year. Now, there's an important reason for this. A righteous man <coughs> wanted to know that he was receiving a virgin wife. And so his assurance of that would be that they would remain apart for a year. That's more than nine months. <laughs> and uh, assuming that she had not had a child in that year, then he could safely accept her as his wife and know that she was pure. Um, but this betrothal was very much a marriage contract. If the husband died, the man died, before they actually consummated their marriage relationship, the woman was considered to be a widow. If the woman died, whatever <coughs> pledge am amount had been given by the family to him, the dowry that would have been given at the time of consummation, he received upon her death. And the only way that a betrothed couple could become unmarried, well, there were really two ways. One was that one or the other would die, and the other is that they would be divorced. So, you know, this idea of a betrothal, very different than, than what we think of. And Matthew makes it very clear to us that this all, what we read here, happened before they came together, meaning before Mary and Joseph had any kind of physical relationship with one another. And she was found to be with child. That means that she was discovered to be. We have uh, no recording, either in Matthew or Luke, about how the conversation took place between Mary and Joseph. I can imagine it would have been a very difficult conversation. But you get this impression from Matthew here that there is this came this point where really Mary just couldn't hide it any longer. She was 
found to be. <laughs> she was discovered to be with child. And of course, Matthew, as the narrator, explains to us, and of course we believe Mary knew from, the, from Luke that the angel had told her, that this child was not of a man, but was of the Holy Spirit. Now, in terms of how we can apply this to ourselves today, I believe that the very first point that we want to grab hold of from these verses is that uh, there's a faith involved here. There's a faith involved on Mary's part, but there's also a faith involved on Joseph's part. And, of course, today, uh, 2,000 years later, in terms of either accepting or denying this virgin birth, there is a faith that's required on our part. And our first point here is that faith often begins with someone else. Faith often begins with someone else. In this case, Mary had the faith that what was given to her, what was told to her by the angel, what was given to her by the Holy Spirit, was that and nothing else. Of course, she knew it. For herself, because she knew she hadn't been with a man, and yet she knew she was pregnant. So, you know, there was no doubt in her mind. But can you imagine trying to explain that? Clearly, at this point, Joseph doesn't have the same faith that Mary has. And I don't know about any of you and how you all have come to know the Lord, but my guess is, is that most of you came to know the Lord through someone else that most of you came to this belief, if you believe that Mary was a virgin when she had Jesus, that this happened, uh, and your acceptance of it happened, because someone else had the faith before you. And you watched their faith. And based on the faith of someone else, you ultimately had faith yourself. We see this happening here in Joseph's life, that faith begins with someone else. 